In this video, I'll go through how to construct the coupling base. So we'll start with the sketch. And I will use the slot tool. I'll build this around the origin. So I'll start with the outside dimensions. So the outer dimensions on this have a radius of one inch. And the length is center to center is 2.5. And also I'll center it about the origin like that. And then on the inside, I'll do the same thing, except that radius is going to be 0.5. Finish that sketch and go extrude boss base. And that's what I'm looking for is that area right there. And this is 0.5 inches thick. I'll just extrude it up. So that's a great starting point. Now we also have uh, that feature that comes off the back. So I'm just going to do a sketch on there. You can do it on either side. It's the part's symmetrical in that manner. And I want to make sure I find that origin that center point so when I create that circle it'll already be constrained so that'll be lined up there that'll help us down the road and the radius oops the diameter on that is actually 1.25 and from there to there is one inch and we'll need to connect this and I'm going to connect from the quadrant of the circle down to there. I want to match back up to that quadrant when I get done. And we use our trim tool. For trim, you just hold down the left mouse button and swipe across what you want to trim. Now make sure you don't trim away that line. I need that line. That part. And then also there's a hole in this. It uses the same center and that's a half inch diameter hole. So I just extrude that all at one time like that. Finish that sketch. So that's what I have there. I'm just going to extrude it that way. Again, it, because of the symmetry, I could put that part, I could put this feature on the back or on the front, whichever you want to call it. So I'll go to Features Extrude Boss Base. And I just have to flip the direction here. And that is half inch thick. So that looks like that. And I do need to cut out a piece of this right here. So I'll make a new sketch. And you can either do it on the front or the top. I think I'll do it on the top. And I'll just use the rectangle tool. Rectangle tool is a really quick way. Instead of constructing it out of lines, just use the rectangle tool. Put some dimensions on there. That slot is actually 1.25 wide. Now be careful because you need to orient this thing. It, it's not just randomly placed along the length here. Uh, one thing, again, remember I built the part around the origin. So it would be easy enough for me to just add a dimension from the edge there to the origin. And it's just going to be half of 1.25, which is 0.625. And notice everything's black, so I know it's constrained. So there is my sketch. And I will do an extrude cut to remove that and there's my finished part I will save that Page 330. Make that <coughs> and I'm going to put that on a drawing sheet. So go up to File, make a drawing from the part. So drawing. 
And remember, we're going to use B size sheets, so B size ANSI. Say OK. And come over here and choose your view. Now, remember the idea here is the front view should show the most information, fewest hidden line, and the longest dimension. And also think about what your other views are going to be based on the front view. Now, here it says this is the front view. That just happens to be the way the sketch originated on the plane. I don't know if that's a great front view or not. Now, some of these are definitely not. Like that would be a bad front view. That's a bad front view. Uh, this actually is... Let's see what this looks like. Mm. No, that's not really the view that I want. Let's go back over here to our view palette. Now, if you can't find the view that you want, here's what we're going to do is use our current view. Okay, in order to do that, uh, we have to go back to our model. The current view we have right now is, is an isometric. Let's, let's just go back to our model. So go down to the bottom, click on your model again. And now orient the view the way that you want your front view to look. And I think the best front view might be that view just like that uh, and instead of trying to just wiggle it around and make it work you can come up here to this view orientation click on the cube the way that you want to see the view so I think that's a good front view so let's go with that so now let me just go down here and click on where my drawing sheet is come over to my palette and you'll have to update it so if you see there's a little thing that says refresh. If you click on refresh, you'll see what your current view looks like. Let's just drag that out there. So if we use that as the front, that is the top, that is the right side, and there's my ISO. That's a really good way to present that part. Remember you can move this over to get it out of the way. Right? I don't I have very few hidden lines. The only hidden lines I'm gonna see is from the actual holes themselves. So let's turn those on. So if I click inside that box and come over here on display style, let's turn on our hidden lines and say OK. Now one downside of that is it put hidden lines on the ISO. So click in that box and let's turn off the hidden lines by choosing hidden lines removed just for the ISO view. OK, that's a, I think that's a good presentation here. Let's go ahead and add uh, the center. Mark is already on there for the circle. Let's add our center lines. Remember, click on on the two edges. That'll put the center lines on. Two edges. Two edges. Now, something weird. You see what's going on right there? What the software is doing is cr it's creating a line where the circle meets that vertical line, that intersection point. That's called a tangent point. Uh, let's delete that. Let's go back. Here, let me just undo for a second. We want to get rid of that tangent line. If you right click on it, you'll see this thing that says tangent edge. What you want to do is remove the tangent edge, right? Because in reality, you wouldn't see that. That's not a line. So now we can go back and put our center line on there. That looks much better. There's the center line here. Taking care of that one. Uh, what else? Oh, we should actually put some center marks in here. I wasn't thinking about that. So what I want to see is a center mark for that radius and that radius. What it's doing is putting one in the middle. That's, that's useless. Don't put a center line on or center mark like that. So if you come over here and look at your options, you can see for slots, which is what we have, if you click on that, that'll put my center lines on there just like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, we're going to not have, you don't want center lines on this view. So you can just right click those and hide them. Right click, hide, right click, hide. Remember, these views are all tied together in some ways. So sometimes you have to go through that. Now, speaking of tangent lines, see those lines? Those are That's exactly what those are, tangent lines. If you find those to be a problem where they may be distorting the view or something, you can always just right click and hide those. Right up, see this eyeball thing right here? Just hide it, it'll make it go away. It, and in that case, it doesn't really matter so much on that one. Uh, now let's add our dimensions. 
So we'll go to Smart Dimension. Now, see what I got going on there? That is an ISO dimension. That's a problem. We don't want ISO dimensions on our drawing. We want ANSI style dimensions. A couple of dead giveaways. One is the way that that leader line looks up, excuse me, looks like. The other thing is if you put up vertical dimension, like if I go from there to there, see how the numbers are going vertically. You shouldn't have to turn your paper to read the numbers. So what we need to do is change that for this sheet. So let's come up here to the top to Options. Go to Document Properties. And again, this the software is saying that it's on ANSI. It's clearly not. So what you're going to have to do is cycle through. So make it be an ISO and then go back up and do it again. Put it on ANSI. Say OK. There you go. So that your soft, you may not have that issue with your software. It has to do with your drawing template, which I, I will show you how to make that correction a little bit later. Again, so dimension each of the features and just dimension them one time. Leave a little bit of space between the part. Now don't do dimensions like this. I'm exaggerating, but sometimes I see things like that. You know, everything should be reasonably close, but don't, at the same time, don't jam them in tight to the part. Give yourself a little bit of space. You should be able to see what the part looks like and then interpret the dimensions. It's very easy to click and drag these dimensions to a new location. So be reasonable about how you dimension the object. Yep, there aren't that there aren't that many dimensions on this part. So we can kind of spread them out. Around the views. And I think that's, oh, I need that, I need that center to center. Try that again. So let's get this dimension here. We do need that dimension on there. I think that's it. Okay, title block, you go up to note. You want to put your name in there. And then the page number, problem number. God. Let's see, that page number is 330. And it is problem four. Hit escape. And there is your finished drawing. You want to save it. Save it to your whatever folder you've been putting your drawings in. And remember to create a PDF file. So do a save as and convert it into a PDF. And make sure your name is part of the name. The pro some form of the problem number Please put the page number, problem number, and your name in there. And then make sure it's set to PDF and save that. And that's what I'll have you email to me is that PDF 